Hey everybody, welcome back to some more early morning barking, talking about BPD and MPD by somebody that has both. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and do all the socially things scrolling past you on the screen right now. Come and join us in the Discord on the Patreon as well and get all of that stuff. There's like a podcast and stuff. I have another podcast as well. I never mentioned that, but it, there's a link in the description below. It's a real thing. Trust me. Go and see it. Right. Today I want to talk about narcissism in relationships. In particular, things to look out for early on in a relationship and things that we as narcissists can potentially do that are very bad. Okay, so I'm kind of coming at, there, there are many videos like this, like things to look out for signs and like I'm, I'm coming at it from the point of view of the narcissist here and I, I've not done a lot of these right? Some of these can get pretty dark, but I, that doesn't mean these don't happen, right? So the the first thing that I want to talk about is, th this is summed up in the quote, look what you made me do, right? This is somebody blaming you for, I'm getting it getting it wrong already, right? I'm, I'm doing it the wrong way around. This is us blaming other people for what we've done wrong, Look what you made me do. Bullshit. No, you don't get to say that. You you don't get to give somebody that level of control over you and trying to make them take responsibility for it, right? Somebody made you do that? Really? It doesn't even fit in with the rest of your narcissistic persona, does it? The idea that somebody could make you do something until that thing that you've done is the wrong thing and then somebody made you do it. Really? Really? Look at yourself, please. I, I don't know what to tell you about that. I, I, I don't know how to tell you that you shouldn't do that. Um, you know you shouldn't do that. Stop it, please. Um, you never get to say, look what you made me do. Nobody made you do anything. Nobody can make you do anything. Stop using it as an excuse for something. If you hear yourself say that, you've got work to do, right? Now, from the point of view of someone you're with, is that worth leaving you over? I don't know, right? I mean, look, your mileage may vary, but these are warning signs, right? If we're saying shit like that to somebody, there's some control element there. That's what all of these are about control over somebody else except this one actually a little bit look what you made me do do we really mean that were we made to do something no no we don't like people having control over us so we're, we're upset at something else we're upset at ourselves because we've done a stupid thing right that's probably what the problem is so, you know, then we move on to something a bit darker. And I know I've never done this one, but I know this is very common. And this can go beyond the narcissism as well. This can go into BPD as well, because suicide is a terrifying thing. It is an ultimate threat, potentially. If you leave me, I'll kill myself. That sounds very dark. That sounds very controlling. Because it is. And it comes at the end. Right? When you've reached a point of that very serious, if you leave me, I'll kill myself. Things are already wrong here in a relationship, right? Things have already broken down to a point. But. There's nice versions of this. I can possibly live without you. There are ways you can put this that you can say with a smile on your face. That you can say it and be romantic. I couldn't possibly live without you. 
You are everything. It can come out of us. And that's the beginning of manipulation. It sounds nice. But it's not. This idea, it, it gets a pass because it sounds somehow romantic that you couldn't possibly live without another person. What a horrible psychological state of existence to be in in real life, right? Right, we have people that we love, people we want near us, people we want in our lives, but I couldn't possibly continue without that person. No. Right, I'm sorry everybody I've ever met, but at most any of you can expect from me is I'll be very sad for a while. Right? But the idea that my life cannot continue without another human in it, no, that's that's not a thing. So we're using that as control. We're using that to keep somebody afraid of what might happen if they go. We guilt and shame them into it. If you are a non-narcissist person and someone says this to you, leave immediately. Don't question it. Don't think about it. Just say, okay, and leave. That's, that's where I am with that one. Because it's just control. It's fear. And if someone kills themselves because you left, that's not why they did it, and that's not your responsibility, right? Healthy people, well people, don't do this, and it goes on this list of, if you find yourself saying this rubbish, you need to start looking at yourself for so many reasons, like, what, are you afraid of somebody leaving you? That's ultimately what it boils down to, right? You you want somebody to not leave you. You're giving the ultimate threat. I'll kill myself if you go. That is a level of insecurity that you're showing off there that is staggering, right? I mean, I've been going through a lot of this idea of being okay with being on your own and all of that stuff, getting a life. But the truth is, it hasn't once occurred to me to harm myself through all of it. You know, that's, that's not part of it. If that's the thing you're feeling, something is going very wrong. And you need some more immediate help. Way beyond the scope of my videos, by the way. Like, you know, call a crisis team. Call whoever you've got in your area. Because that's not right. That's not good. If you mean it, you're in trouble. And if you don't mean it, you're a controlling narcissist. Right? We can't be saying this stuff. You can't ever say that. You can't use your own mental health against you and against somebody that you purport to love. Because that's not how we do this. That's not how life works. That's behavior that has to come to an end. Which moves us into the next one, which is just any form of physical control. You can't put your hands on somebody in that way. The world is full of too many stories of men killing their wives and girlfriends. I believe in the UK we're at the rate of two a week. And well, first of all, that is just, that's just inexcusable. There's no, there's no like, what, what do you say about that? That's a, that's a horrific figure. That is staggering and it is terrifying. And it is done by men with narcissistic traits at the very least. There's an entitlement. There is a power element. There is control. And control lives in narcissism. And it starts off, you know, when you start thinking about it, forms of physical control. And you know the more extreme ones, right? We know the obvious. We know hitting people. We know throwing things. We know smashing things. We know putting hands on people in a violent way. They're obvious and we can see those. 
But it starts off small. And that's really what we're looking at. This starts off with grabbing you to stop you leaving when you've had an argument. That sort of thing. These things are escalated up to. The guy who snaps and drives his girlfriend out into the desert to strangle her didn't start like that. That wasn't his day one on domestic violence, right? He started off grabbing her. And she let that go. And then he grabbed harder and more. And then he choked for a bit. And it got worse and it escalated. And he did something horrible to somebody who didn't deserve it. And as a narcissist, you damn well not be putting your hands on somebody like that. <laughs> it's very difficult to make a video and sit and explain to somebody why you shouldn't physically control somebody. You know they're not yours, they're not your property, they're not yours to control, to own, to move around, to make do what you want them to do. That's not the problem. There's that narcissistic entitlement there, there's that power that you want. And you're exerting it over somebody that can't do anything about it, that can't get away. I, I view this as such low behavior that is so beneath us. I know it comes from a place of narcissism, of narcissistic traits. But I feel when I when I really let the narcissism flow, when I look at my own self image that comes with it, I view myself as so above that. It's pathetic, it's shameful, it's it's awful that you would have to get to that level with somebody. That you would have to feel that you need to physically restrain somebody. All of this is all pathetic and weak and just a sign of someone who has no self-control, someone who has no self-worth. Someone who needs to extrapolate that from having power over somebody that is defenseless. As the Klingons would say, it is without honor. If you want to get violent and get some sort of self-worth from that, go and pick a fight with somebody that could quite feasibly pull your head off and not your girlfriend. Try that. You know, although I'm not condoning you get into a fight with anybody, obviously. It's... Uh... <sighs> This whole idea of trying to physically control a partner of a loved one is, is hideous to me. It, it's gross. It's vile. It's rank. Do you need me to tell you why? Do you need me to tell you that you shouldn't be doing it? But I feel that I should tell people who might experience it in its early stages. You don't stick around to see if it goes away. Right? Because it not going away could mean something unspeakable happening to you and whatever your narcissist might be going through that ceases to be your responsibility as soon as you're in danger and you're in danger so that's where i have nothing further to say on that one really i mean it's it's difficult And I'm, I'm talking about going, but that, that just leads me into the next thing, which is the, the narcissistic isolation of, from friends and family. Of taking you out of the world because you should be all they need, right? How insecure are you that somebody should only need you? That's, that's terrifying, right? And of course, some of us think that. Of course we do. Of course we do, because we're amazing. So how could you need anybody else in your life at all? And to be clear, potential partners, we're not talking about other, you know, we're not, we're not talking about potential competition for your affections. We're talking about anybody. Why do you need friends? Why do you need to see your family? 
Why do you need a night out without me? It's not just who's that guy you were talking to. It's everyone. And when you start getting asked so much. What are you doing with so-and-so? Why are you going there? Why don't you just come here? No. No. If you're doing that, if you're that person trying to isolate, it's because of your own insecurities, right? It's because you're afraid of being left. It's because you're afraid of not having this person available to you when you want them, when you need them, and you're, you, you know that you don't deserve or get 100% of their time and attention. And so you try and isolate them. If, you, if their time is shared between you, friends and family and other loved ones and special people and work, if you can eliminate all of those other things, then you get more time, right? Makes sense. And as a potential partner, you need to take care and make sure that your life remains intact. That you don't start giving things up out of pressure from somebody else. You know how much time you have to give someone and something in a relationship. And you know when that starts being asked to be more. And you start getting that isolation. When that partner starts having problems with various friends and so on, so so on and so forth, when they don't want you going out, it's a thing, and it ties into the very last thing, where we can have a habit of changing people's behaviour to keep them under control in that way, and this comes out in God all kinds of ways. And again, we think of the darker ones first because they're easy. Controlling somebody, changing someone's behavior, getting them to stop doing things, start doing things, pick up new habits, quit old habits. You can see how these things start easily. Haven't you had enough to eat? Are you wearing that? All these sorts of, oh, you were out a bit late last night. You should try and stay in. Are you eating that? Oh, you know, you should eat better. What do you mean you don't go down the gym? There are little picking things that really upset people, that really start to make people question themselves. Have you ever spent time with anybody who starts saying, oh, you don't do that, do you? And how bad that starts to make you feel and you can start to just doubt yourself. Well, maybe, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe you were quite happy doing that, whatever it was beforehand. We have all these little icky, insidious ways of getting into somebody and controlling them to make them into what we want them to be or try and stop them becoming something we don't want them to be. Again, it feeds into our sense of entitlement, of insecurity. And all I can say to that is, if you don't love somebody as they are, leave them the hell alone. Changing somebody, God, You don't get to do that. You don't get to do that. You don't get to decide what's better for them, what they should be. Do you see all this this entitlement, this control, this I know best that is all in this, that we're displaying when we do this behavior? It's disturbing, right? It's controlling. It's, It's unpleasant. And we need to not be doing it. Look out for those key phrases those little things that you might slip in without realizing it. What are you trying to do? Why are you saying that? What's your problem with this person that you need to be picking a thing out and trying to control it? Can you accept somebody for their failures, faults, for the things that you rather were different? Or are they too many and you should just leave that person alone? But the last thing you should be trying to do is change anybody, says the man on a podcast about changing yourself i'm trying to change you for the better trust me i know what's best i hope i've given you some things to look out for whichever side of the fence you're sitting on we're trying to do our best and we need to know some of these warning signs ourselves so that we can stop ourselves 
We have a responsibility to not harm others. And we don't get to blame this condition when we do. And so we need to know, what are these things? How do we hurt people? I didn't know all of the ways I hurt people. I learned a lot. That was the hardest bit about therapy. But once I knew I could start not doing that anymore and seeing how it affected other people and getting some empathy back. I hope that helps you out. You take care. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.